Hi, Dr. Dali. This is Patrick from Hawaii. I have a question regarding UGMA accounts. I have three accounts that I set up for my children, and uh, we're in teaching them about money and investing, and it's working out pretty good. However, I have a question about how the UGMA accounts are taxed. I understand that there's a limit of the first $1,100 is completely tax-free on any gains in the UGMA account, and then the second $1,100 is taxed at a, at a child's rate, uh, which I think uh, should be tax-free as long as my kids don't have any other sources of income. So is there any reason that I wouldn't want to do a tax gain harvesting strategy each and every year? especially while the accounts are small and below that threshold limit of gains, such that I can just each year increase their relative cost basis. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sounds like you have a pretty good understanding of it, Patrick. I'm not sure what I can add to it other than confirming that what you understand is correct. Um, A child's unearned income. The first $1,100 is not taxed. The next $1,100 is taxed at their tax rate. Okay. So assuming they don't have a whole bunch of earned income, uh, they should still be in the 0% capital gains bracket. At that point, the kitty tax kicks in. If there's more than $2,200 a year in income, not return, not increase, not account value, but $2,200 in income in that UTMA account, then taxes are paid on that at the adult's tax rate. So yes, that gives you $2,200 a year in which you can do whatever you want with it, right? You can have a really high income investment. You can have, uh, you know, uh, tax gain harvesting where you sell something with a gain in order to update the basis and update the basis. But keep in mind, most people that get a UGMA account, at least the purpose why my kids have them is to spend money in their 20s. And so I fully expect when they spend that money, they're probably going to be in the 0% capital gains bracket without any tax gain harvesting along the way. But if you want to tax gain harvest and it's not costing you anything to do it, sure, do it as you go along. Um, Just keep in mind as those accounts get bigger, it'll be harder and harder to do that. For example, if the yield on a total stock market index fund is 2% and you got $100,000 in there, well, that's going to get you pretty close to your $2,200 a year in income that's tax-free. There's not much room there to do tax gain harvesting. But if you have a $10,000 account and it's only kicking out $200 a year in income, well, sure, you can do a lot of tax gain harvesting on that account. Um, So it just really depends on the size of the account. Uh, how much tax gain harvesting you can do without paying any taxes on it. A lot of people don't want to get into the weeds that much in their investments, but uh, it doesn't sound like you're very scared of getting out in the weeds. So knock yourself out, do some tax gain harvesting. If you want your questions answered by the White Coat Investor, record your question at whitecoatinvestor.com slash YQA, or click the link in the description. My dad, your host, Dr. Dahl, is a practicing emergency physician, blogger, author, and podcaster. He is not a licensed accountant, attorney, or financial advisor, so this podcast is for your entertainment and information only and should not be considered official, personalized financial advice.